Let me show you how to refill the coolant in an Aston Martin V12. In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to show you how to refill the coolant in the V12 engine. Now, uh, Aston Martin recommends that you flush your coolant about every five years. Maybe you're doing that as part of one of your annual service regimes. That's what I'm doing here today. Um, or maybe you've had to work on your coolant system, like your water pump or your hoses, and you've had to drain your coolant uh, for some other reason, and you need to get it back into the engine. So the process isn't particularly difficult takes only about 15 minutes, but you have to do it right. Most of all, you need to use the right type of coolant if you're putting in a uh, fresh coolant, and you need to be sure that you refill it in a way and you get all the air out of the system called burping it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that properly. Um, the cooling system in a Aston Martin V12 works like most modern cars. It's a pressurized system, and there's a reservoir tank up here at the, almost at the high point in the system which is kind of cool. They've designed it so that it's continually collecting any air that's in the actual coolant flow. Uh, so all the air makes its way back to the reservoir. But I wanted to point out one uh, kind of thing that confused me. Down here in the fender well, I was doing some work and I discovered this plastic reservoir. And this is actually connected to the top of the upper reservoir. So this is the overflow tank. Um, basically, uh, if the pressurized tank, uh, if the fluid expands to the point where there's no more air space in top, uh, it has a pressure relief and that'll come down into this tank and this is atmospheric pressure and uh, any overflow will collect here rather than spilling on the ground. Um, and that you might actually see a little bit of cycling. So if the car heats up, a little bit of fluid might come in comes into here, but then as the coolant all cools back down, it'll draw it back into the uh, reservoir. So normally this tank should be empty. Uh, if you came in here and you saw that this tank was half full, that's probably a sign of something bad going on in your engine. Um, and you might want to get that looked at by an Aston Martin shop. The only prerequisite to uh, refilling your coolant is obviously you have to drain the old coolant out. So I have a separate video that tells you exactly how to do all that, and that should be linked up here and down in the comments below. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the tools and supplies we need to get the job done right. So we need a couple of supplies, parts, to get this done right. When I drained my coolant out, I got about two and a half gallons out, so we need to be able to come up with at least two and a half gallons of replacement coolant. So uh, you need to get an OAT, O-A-T coolant. So this is Havilene Extended Life um, coolant. This is an OAT coolant. Um, you can check out my other article uh, that'll be linked here that tells you all about how I determined this is the right stuff. Now it comes in two formats, concentrate and, which is what this is in the black bottle, and then it comes in a white bottle that's 50-50 premix. So since we have to come up with two and a half gallons of 50-50 mix, I've got two gallons of concentrate and then you're supposed to mix that with distilled water. So I've gone down to the local uh, grocery store and I've picked up two gallons of distilled water. Now this obviously will make four gallons of coolant and I only need two and a half, but anyways, uh, here's two gallons for the first batch and there's, I'm gonna use another half gallon out of the other batch and have some extra left over afterwards. Tools to refill the coolant, you only need, uh, in the basic sense, you only need a funnel. Um, so I have a funnel and I'm going to show you how to just uh, refill using that. But I'm also going to show you how to refill uh, using a vacuum driven uh, airlift coolant filler system. Um, this basically takes the whole burping process uh, out of the equation. So I'm going to show you both ways. Uh, it'll also be good to probably have uh, a couple of shop rags around and then your inspection light is always a a useful tool to have uh, when you're doing something like this. So before we can start putting the coolant into the car, we need to worry about getting the proper concentration. So Aston Martin has recommended a 50-50, 50% /50, 50 uh, coolant to 50% water mixture ratio. That'll get you down to about minus 35 degrees Celsius. Uh, plenty good for where most Astons run. And the coolant is sold in 
generally in two forms. A premix version where it's already a 50-50 mix, and if you're buying the Havoline oat, that uh, comes in a white bottle. What I have here is the concentrated version that has to be mixed with distilled water to get it to 50-50 or whatever uh, solution ratio you want to have yourself. So if you've got the premix, you're good to go on to the next step. If you're like me and you need to mix it up, uh, how do you actually pull off this trick? Well, our car is going to need about two and a half gallons of coolant to refill it. That's how much came out of the car is how I know that. One thing you could do, you could put the first gallon of concentrate in and then the first gallon of distilled water in. Uh, it doesn't really matter that they aren't pre-mixed. Obviously, it's going to get mixed up in the engine itself. So that gets the first two gallons in. But then I need that last half gallon, and I don't know it's exactly a half gallon, so I don't want to add concentrate and water and kind of sit there and work it out. So I'm going to pre-mix up in another empty jug uh, another gallon uh, of concentrate and water, so I have a 50-50 mix here. So that's a pretty easy process. I'm going to put the, the receiving bottle in the sink. Uh, I've already worked out that since this holds four liters, that's the two liter mark. So I'm going to fill it up halfway with concentrate and then top it off with uh, uh, distilled water. So let's open up our concentrate and break the seal. And then I'm going to try to do it without a funnel. So it might get funny if I miss completely. All right, so that's about two liters of the coolant. And now I'm gonna to add to it two liters of distilled water that I picked up at the local grocery store. Now, strictly speaking, you don't have to use the distilled water, it's recommended. If, you're, um, if you have good quality water where you live, uh, you could probably just use the tap water, but if you're on well water that's maybe full of uh, other you know, contaminants, you might want to invest in the dollar or so for a gallon of distilled water. All right, well, there we have it. Uh, so now I've got uh, a 50-50 premix of the solution. You can see it actually kind of looks like, you know, red Kool-Aid. It's a little bit orange, a little bit red, uh, but this is ready uh, to get uh, used and let's get it into the car next. Let's get down to the details of getting it done. The first step for me, uh, since I'm going to be working right here near the paint, is I'm going to put a fender cover on. All right, so then we can open up our reservoir. Now this is where I remind you to make sure you've got your drain plug back in and sealed up right now. So we're going to start putting coolant back in. So there's two ways to do this. There is the manual old school method, which I'll show you a little bit about, where you're just gonna use a funnel and pour it in. And then another method I'm gonna show you in a minute that's where I'm gonna use the vacuum airlift to get it into the system. So we're just gonna use our funnel, get it in here. And then I've got my 50-50 pre-mixed uh, coolant. And I'm just gonna, you know, obviously, you know, pour it in. And you just keep adding it here um, until you get the tank filled up. So you'll, you'll fill and you'll fill and you'll kind of hold this back. And essentially you want to get it to the point where there's about the coolant levels visible just about an inch uh, below the uh, bottom lip of the, uh, the tank. And once you've got it that filled up, you're going to want to try and help get as much of the air out of the system as possible. So I'd recommend coming over squeezing uh, you know, a bunch of times the, uh, the coolant bypass hose or the, the upper, you know, you can kind of hear it glurk, glurk, glurking back up here. Um, and this will help kind of force uh, the air back over to the tank. So you'll do that a few times, you'll come back over here and you'll check the coolant level and until you basically you can't get any more coolant in and then skip to the over the airlift part. Um, and then you'll, I'll show you how to get the car warmed up to do the final uh, level set. So the second method I wanted to show you how you can get your coolant in uses an airlift vacuum filler. So basically, this is a tool that I'm going to fit over the top. It has sort of a tapered rubber cone, 
and it requires compressed shop air. And what it's going to do is it's going to suck all the air out of the cooling system. So rather than me needing to burp the coolant, uh, the air out of the system uh, afterwards, it's going to pull it out in advance. It's actually going to pull like 26 inches of mercury vacuum on the system and pulls all the air out. Um, and then it has a very neat trick where it will allow me to slurp up all the coolant out of a bucket. And over here, I've actually pre-mixed um, about nine and a half uh, liters of my two and a half gallons of 50-50 mix ready to go. So I'm going to put this hose into that bucket and it's going to suck it right back in. It's only going to take a minute and there'll be no air in the system and it'll be almost uh, perfect right uh, as soon as I'm done. So let's uh, show you how to do that. So the first step is we're going to hook up the compressed air and I'm going to orient the system kind of like this so I can have my hose hanging over the side of the car. And so I'm going to just basically uh, get the plug in there as best I can. The compressed air is on and as soon as I push this button it's going to start running air through and a Venturi effect is going to start sucking the air out of the ch reservoir chamber. And then we should probably see some neat things like the hoses collapsing and then I'll be able to watch the vacuum build up on this gauge. And that's about maxed out as much vacuum as it can manage to pull. If I take a look at the reading on here, and maybe we can come over for the camera, do an over the shoulder. We've got about 24 inches of mercury. We're in the green zone on the gauge. Um, I've got this valve closed. That's to this fill pipe. And as we saw, the hoses have all collapsed because there is literally no air left inside the, the cooling system. Any air that's there would have uh, basically been drawn out uh, to the reservoir. So this is where I also decided to be a good idea. I just let my car sit for about five or six minutes and I wanted to see if there was a leak, like let's say the drain plug was leaking. Uh, it obviously couldn't hold a vacuum, air would be leaking in there. So um, I just let it sit for you know a good five, ten minutes, came back and checked, the needle hadn't moved. So now I'm ready to go ahead and start air lifting uh, the coolant up into the car. So that's pretty cool. So the next step is to get the hose dipped in the bucket of coolant. And I'm just going to get this run down to the bottom of it. And all there is to this now is I slowly open the fill valve on the air lift. And we've got coolant zipping up the pipe like crazy now. And we should start to see the coolant level going down. And we are. And essentially that vacuum is now helping us. It's pulling all the coolant back up into uh, the engine. And we'll probably see our hoses starting to expand again soon. So the vacuum level's starting to drop off. And I'm near the bucket. I'm going to tip it. Keep the tip of the hose right in the bottom. Essentially, once the vacuum level runs out, uh, it should be full. Sure how many inches we've got there. It's almost slowed all the way down, but we're almost a completely empty bucket now too. And that's that, zero vacuum. So I can disconnect 
compressed air. Carefully lift this away, it's a little drippy. And I'm gonna have a quick look at how full the reservoir is. And I can probably add a little bit manually right now. I can see that it's in the bottom of the reservoir. So let's get our funnel and just do a final top up. So the spec, there is no inspection window, <laughs> is to fill it up till it's about an inch below the bottom of the cap. So that's the last of that first nine and a half liters. All right. <clears throat> if we get in here for a close up, you can see our orange coolant now is about an inch below that uh, bottom lip of the opening. So, with the reservoir filled to max, let's go ahead and get the cap back on, uh, get the car back on the ground, and we'll move on to the next phase of the process. So, the next phase of the process is done by starting the car up and getting it fully up to temperature. Essentially, we want the coolant to circulate, the air bubbles to make their way to the reservoir tank, um, some expansion is gonna go on in the system, and another key element is we're gonna turn the heating system on to full, as hot as we can make it to go. We want it to be circulating the coolant through the heater core in the dash, um, so we're gonna have that at full chat. And so they say, let the car warm up to full normal temperature. So that'll take a number of minutes. So I backed the car out to the back of the shop, so I've got fresh air. So let's get underway and let it warm up. My favorite part of this car. Love the startup. So it's been about six minutes now since we've started the car up. You can see we're up to full temp normal temperature. So let's go ahead and pull the car into the shop and uh, do a final check on the level after it cools down. So we're back in the garage now. I've let the car completely cooled back down. So I'm gonna open up the reservoir, do one final check and make sure that the coolant is about uh, an inch below the upper lip uh, to its maximum fill and it is. Uh, if yours is down a little bit because it's burped out a little air, just go ahead and top it up uh, with a little bit more coolant and then make the cap snug. And then I'd recommend one last step. Uh, I'd get underneath the car, make sure you have no drips if you were working on some other aspect of the cooling system. Um, and also check that the drain plug is uh, dry as a bone and uh, you don't have any leaks there. If, if everything's all nice and dry, you could go ahead then and get the under tray put back on and. Uh, pretty much wrap up the project. So as I said before, Aston recommends we do this about every five years. Uh, as you've seen, this isn't a very hard process and you can certainly get it done in a morning in the garage. Um, up here, you'll probably find my playlist uh, that includes, you know, what's the right coolant, how to drain the things, the other steps of the process. Uh, if down here, you're gonna find a link to my companion blog article uh, that'll take you over and show you where you can buy the coolant and things like that. Uh, over here, if you like getting videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe to get automatically notified when I release a new one. And as always, I love to hear your comments. Please leave those down below. Thanks for watching.